to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And it's possible you may have heard me teach that in administering the anointing or the power of god there are many factors that govern being anointed one of it is that you have to be grafted into christ through the new birth experience and so the bible says that the anointing that you have within you that it is able to teach you all things hallelujah and then there is the anointing that comes by reason of your call and assignment the anointing follows your office not your personality so even if your personality is damaged or damaging the anointing will deceptfully remain there it is not an accurate measure of your spiritual health it's just a measure of your consistency as far as remaining in your office is concerned the danger with that dimension of the anointing is that you can be going down in your spiritual life and yet that grace remains because it was sent to your office not to you so it is possible to be healing people of something you are dying of it is possible to be blessing people of something that is destroying you because the anointing that second level follows your office hallelujah um, physically speaking when certain offices are given to people there are privileges that follow the office is that true security maybe an official car an official house um whether you are good or bad provided you still occupy that office those privileges remain but there are times where the privilege of that that office is withdrawn and all those things leave immediately you can imagine a man like elisha elisha died of sickness and yet that grace and that mantle upon his office remained and when they brought in a dead body without nobody praying or placing a demand on the anointing two dead bodies but one dead body raised another one can you imagine that mystery it's not like a dead body that was alive and then raised another one there were two dead bodies one was more dead than the fresh body and the old decayed dead body raised the fresh one that is how powerful this anointing is so an individual can be suffering poverty and shame and yet have that grace and with one declaration he can open your heavens and this is why many people say how come i am blessing people of something i cannot enjoy because it's the grace that comes on the office there are two ways to receive from that grace you have to place a demand on that grace yourself that means if you're a preacher and you are preaching you have to listen to that message that you preach and receive it as a member not as a preacher even though it is you preaching hmm. it is the reason why many people never get blessed by the anointing upon their lives hallelujah and then the second way is you too must find other people the same way people listen to you and place a demand on your grace you must look for an office that attends to your need and submit yourself and tap into it then the third kind of anointing we'll do more of that in the evening is the anointing that follows you by reason of your discerning what god is doing per season this is not just a grace that follows you by reason of being grafted into christ this is not just a grace that follows you by reason of discovering your call spiritually speaking but this is a grace that comes to honor you for understanding and aligning to god's program per season so it is possible to have a believer who has not backslidden it is possible to have a believer who is functioning in his call and yet not carry that end time anointing the bible says he that hath an ear 
that means not everybody has that kind of ear let him hear what the spirit saying to the churches hallelujah so the bible says that david served the purposes of god in his own generation let me give a charge very briefly this morning on becoming a voice becoming a voice the scribes and the pharisees came to john the prophet who we call the baptist and they began to inquire of him who are you what kind of a strange man are you all the way from the wilderness and now you are shouting and declaring repentance and that people will make straight the path of the lord who are you are you one of the prophets are you one are you the messiah and he said no they said who then are you and he made a very interesting statement he said i am the voice of one who is crying in the wilderness repent he says and make straight the path of the lord it is possible for an individual to become a voice as far as the purposes of god are concerned within a generation a very interesting scripture says many are called but few are chosen for many years i did not understand that scripture what kind of a scripture is this why would you say many are called and then few are chosen hallelujah many are called by divine destiny god intends for many and if possible everyone to become a voice but the few that are chosen are not just chosen by god's predetermined counsel they are also chosen by the degree of their compliance to the terms that make for an excelling life generationally there are many people who continue to admire voices in ministry especially in politics in business they wonder why god seemed to have lifted certain people in such a marvelous way and honored them and for most of us our conclusion becomes i think it's just an election of grace i agree um, but that is not the complete answer because you will be learning from this session that god it can be in your prophetic blueprint to be a great man with with grace over nations and territories and you may spend your life not even taking one local government for jesus hallelujah just because it is part of god's predetermined counsel for you does not mean it will come to pass the bible says from the foundations of the earth for instance the lamb was slain but jesus had to come are we together and submit to that prophecy and act it out experientially in fact he got to a point in the flesh where he himself was almost giving up he prayed in gethsemane and said father if it be thy will take this cup of me that means jesus himself would have renegotiated it and would make that prophecy look like god lied so just because god said he will be a mighty preacher you know most people don't know what to do with prophecy you can have a correct prophetic word upon your life and fail as if god did not see you prophecy and divine speakings whether it comes through a vessel of god or from the truth of scripture does not automatically guarantee that it will work in your life is it not written in your bible that ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but there are many people who are living far short of that is it not in your bible that no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick how many believers are plagued with all kinds of ills and diseases is it not in your bible that the path of the just is as a shining light that should shine ever brighter how many people have to reminisce and draw comfort from their yesterday because their tomorrow is always worse than their yesterday is it not in your bible that i was young and now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread some of the biggest beggars around are believers do you agree with me he says i and the children we read yesterday that the lord has given me we are for signs and wonders in israel but how many people and families are mad with shame and pain and embarrassment that immediately should tell you that just because god said it hear me please it does not mean it will happen in your life forever oh lord your word is settled it tells you the location in heaven 
it didn't say in your life it takes you engaging the forces of obedience as i'll be sharing in the night to make it a reality in your life there are many people today who when they go to heaven they will be surprised what was the blueprint of their prophetic destinies many preachers died as arm robbers many individuals destined to take nations died as non-entities because although it was in their prophetic blues blueprint and for others god had gone far to reveal it to them like some of you who are seated here now you will be surprised to see what is in your prophetic blue script uh, blueprint jesus said and and paul also made reference to that statement lo i come as it is written of me in the volume of the books that means it is written concerning everybody in the volume of the books god is not scratching his head wondering what to do with your life now that you are here it's been decided before your arrival but whether you live up to it or not depends on you so i want you to listen very carefully as i charge your heart this morning because i can tell you you can start from anywhere and go anywhere with god he told abraham from where thou art lift up your eyes and see northward southward eastward westward he says that as far as your eyes can see to you i have given for an inheritance if you're still with me say amen, amen. most times when people come to me whether for prayer or encouragement especially ministers of the gospel the only thing they are looking for is anointing I guess because they see some of the things that God graciously does in and through my life they are tempted to believe that all it takes for a life of exploits and to become a voice is an impartation of the anointing and they are right there is a place for it except that that is not the protocol that is not the way Jesus Christ made mighty men in scripture you want to become a voice and you want to become mighty your first reference is not a man of god your first reference is scripture for the bible declares that the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture we might find hope jesus began his ministry by calling a certain kind of people most of them were already people involved in business and fishing like peter and his brothers and then a few of them were involved in government a few were involved in all kinds of things but generally they were not people who were doing much at a global or territorial level as far as the then world were concerned and then jesus began to submit them through a series of processes hallelujah after three and a half years he died and these people became very mighty men and by the time we read their accounts in the book of acts they said these are they that turn the world upside down not just jerusalem not just judea indeed they had honored that great commission and turned the world upside down so what changed about the life of a fisherman even though it was not an ordinary profession those days but what suddenly happened to peter that turned him from a fisherman to become one who had a voice that even his impact is still immortalized in our lives till today i pray that god will open our eyes my assignment this morning is to get you angry with your current level and to let you see that god and the nations demand more from you the bible says to whom much is given we must stop settling for a life of mediocrity and average giving excuses and hoping and believing and justifying ourselves by saying god just decided to raise others and bless them and since we are not the privileged ones let's just come around this that is not an accurate thinking deuteronomy chapter 28 please and verse 1 and 2 let's see a powerful prophetic blessing that was given that relates to every one of us and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day what is the blessing that the lord thy god will set thee on high is that in your bible above all the nations of the earth how many nations 
all. That verse 2, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. So you see that you have to hearken to his voice to become a voice. If you cannot hearken to the voice of the Lord, the world will also not hearken to you. Jesus Christ hearkened to the voice of the Father. And then the Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And in one of the renditions he said, hear ye him. The world will not hear you when you don't hear God. No, hear ye him is the blessing of those who have a functional relationship with Jesus. Now, let me give us three keys very quickly and then we'll pray this morning. Number one, I'm not going to dwell so much there because I touched that in my teaching yesterday. What is the first requirement to being a voice? In fact, what does it mean to be a voice? Please write. To be a voice means... That you have the privilege of influencing a generation with your thoughts, your convictions, and your values. To be a voice means that you are able to influence a generation with your thoughts, your convictions, and your values. hallelujah so becoming a voice is about exerting kingdom influence within a generation for the purpose of not only the gospel but the entire program of the kingdom so if god is able to honor you and you are able to influence your generation it is safe to call you a voice there are many people who are called voices we use other expressions to show the excellency of their influence something like generals something like you know we, we we use all kinds of cliches and expressions that try to show the extent of their impact and their influence becoming a voice talks about making maximum kingdom impact maximum kingdom impact hallelujah the first key number one you must know god you cannot become a voice in any generation especially today's world without a functional knowledge of god these we discussed yesterday from daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the b part it says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong number one capacity and then number two they shall do exploits not just say exploits not just preach exploits hallelujah those who make impact and become voices in their generations are not just those who say alone but they are those who say and do you see the kingdom was not designed to only hear realities we should also see when you read acts chapter 8 from verse 5 the bible says philip went down to samaria and there he preached christ unto them and then verse 6 says that the people with one accord gave heed to those things which philip spake please finish that scripture for me hearing and seeing that is the true character of kingdom impact hearing and seeing so you tell us god is good and show us god is good you tell us god heals and show us god heals you tell us god lifts and you show us that god lifts hearing and seeing i think it's in acts chapter one when um, he began to speak and he said the former treatise I have told you O Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach Jesus verse 1 he did not just teach alone there were things that he did and then he, he taught 
if the communication of the gospel from you is only teaching and there is no doing it means that something is wrong are we together yes when you say jesus is lord you must show that jesus is lord when you say jesus lift there must be evidences showing forth that jesus lived so number one you must know god many believers have not taken the time to invest in the knowledge of god john 17 and verse 3 jesus is praying and here's what he had to say and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent hallelujah it matters that we know god it matters that god does not just become a theoretical god but that we take the time to press please listen to my message yesterday i taught extensively on having an experience with god that is a very important message especially for the times that we live in whether it is moses or jacob the first thing that happened to really define their lives was their encounter with the god of the bible i wish we had time would have explored exodus chapter 3 where the bible says that moses had an encounter with the god of the hebrews until then he had remember he had come from um he was raised in egypt by pharaoh's daughter so he was taught the way of the egyptians now he was at the backside of the mountain and the bible says he saw a bush that was burning and would not be consumed and he said i will turn aside and see this great sight and when god saw that he turned aside he said moses now take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground god now began to communicate his burden unto moses i have seen the affliction of my people and their cry by the reason of their taskmasters he said and i am come down to deliver them now he told moses that he was mandating him to become a representation of the deliverance power of god to egypt and moses asks a very interesting question when i go and stand before pharaoh who do i tell pharaoh send me i know pharaoh he will not listen to nonsense and he said i am that i am god began to reveal himself to him and at the end of it moses had the confidence and he went and stood before pharaoh and said thus said the lord god of the hebrews let my people go pharaoh laughed at him to scorn and to cut the long story short after 10 plagues pharaoh had to give up because moses did not just say he also did hallelujah you must know god listen the end time ministry would demand the proper functional knowledge of god because we are going to be standing against things and people and systems and structures that are vocally antichrist are we together never in the history in modern history have we seen um, this level of structural defiance it's like a rebuilding of the tower of babel again this time around it's not just individuals but the devil is building systems and structures most of us do not know what we are coming up against we are not just coming up against men if you are coming up against a man when the man dies you are free but when you fight a structure even when the people behind the structure leave the structure itself has its own life are we together i'll give you an instance the social media never in any church age do we have a template a, a a platform that has more power than even people and governments are we together that the social media has the power to dethrone even a sitting president that is how powerful it is even if zuckerberg say for instance transits today the power of the social media and the platform he has created that means if the social media says jesus is not lord that is a that is a battle that will take only god to fight and it is saying it everywhere and our children are embracing that philosophy and building their destinies on the fact that jesus is just one of the many options we need to know god we cannot present a god that we are still confused about 
the level of accuracy that the world needs the level of evidence that the world needs to bow to the lordship of christ is greater than the evidences they would have needed 30 years ago 30 years ago if you came with a message and said jesus is lord even if people did not believe him they would believe you and submit to you in total loyalty but today you say jesus is lord your child will prove it and say can he do your child will ask you to prove it can he do for me what my app will do for me my app wakes me when i sleep i don't need the holy spirit when we started with god there were many privileges we did not have so it was easy to depend on the holy spirit now technology can safely replace a major part of his ministry why do you tell me to submit to the holy spirit because he can wake you what do i need that for when i can program my entire life in an app the app can know me even more than myself the app can tell me when i'm tired the app can tell me when i need to sleep the app can tell me when to go to my doctor we need to have a better presentation if we want our generation to submit to jesus just telling them repent jesus is lord they will clap for you and walk away someone say i must know god it is very important that we truly know and understand god in jeremiah chapter 9 when you read from verse 23 to 24 it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom the bible says neither the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 says but let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me the pride of the believer is not just in the acquisition of things or mundane achievements as important as they may look the real pride of the believer is in the knowledge of god say amen number two what else does it take to become a voice to be mighty and marvelously used by god to influence your generation with his purposes and ideas number two you must be transformed now i want to dwell for a few minutes here because this is where many well-intentioned believers preachers business people captains of industry especially from our regions we have downplayed the place of transformation sustaining superior belief systems hallelujah very very important the average preacher does not have a global view the average preacher does not see things from a global scope the average preacher um, preachers approach to ministry for instance is not global in scope our approach should be local but our view has to be global because the whole world is interconnected somebody from australia can influence your sermon in your local church and influence the focus and the participation of your membership without being there someone can sell an idea that is antichrist and you never see the person so we must be able to sustain an intelligence and a worldview the average preacher does not even know the ideas that are fighting the gospel today we have not taken the time to expand our understanding are we together and then many people i permit my bias i'm talking to everybody but please permit my bias for preachers we have not been able to sustain a superior orientation that gives us capacity to present jesus in a way that all and sundry can receive him there is a desperate need for transformation there is a way you present jesus that even those close to you will reject him there is a skill to presenting jesus it's not just truthfulness you need more than truthfulness your gospel can be true but your approach can make it look like a lie let me repeat myself again your gospel and your message can be true but your approach let me show you something the bible says um do we have that's mark mark chapter 16 i believe and verse 15 please give it to us let's examine for one minute as a case study mark 16 15. this is what we know to be the great commission i'd like you to pay very close attention please look at it jesus is speaking here 
and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature look very carefully there are certain details that are captured in this singular verse number one he tells you what to do go ye so it is an action word you should not be passive go ye means be courageous go ye means be strategic go ye means be intentional number two he tells you where to go to into all the world notice he never said go around the world into all the world so it means that your gospel must be more than moving from house to house he says into the world enter the system penetrate systems and structures that there must be an advocacy for christ across every strata of human activities and then he tells you what to do preach to preach means to declare to proclaim to preach means to preserve as true and he tells you your audience every creature so let's do a quick recap he tells you what to do go and preach he tells you where to go all over the earth and into the systems he tells you your audience the creation but the only thing missing in this scripture is he does not tell you how to do it the how was left flexible because he knew the times would change the message remains the same the audience remains the same the command remains the same but the strategy and the approach must be flexible and must be predefined per generation per dispensation is someone learning now the message should never change the audience should never change your approach i mean your that command and that mandate should never change but the strategy that you deploy even satan has metamorphosed into several things the way satan worked 100 years ago is not the same way he works now he has taken advantage of the fluidity of time and he's evolved himself the strategy is still the same to steal to kill and to destroy we must sustain superior belief systems transformation in the kingdom is a product of two things number one is a product of exposure 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 is very 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 important not negative exposure you can be exposed negatively the principal tool for the believers exposure is not travel around the world that can give you a secular exposure and that is important but the principal tool for the believers exposure and orientation is the scripture are we together romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 says i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice and he calls it holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age it says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus that means jesus did not just defeat sin satan hell and the grave just because he was the son of god there was an orientation that he sustained let this mind be in you can i tell you this we are born to look like our environments genetically speaking and environmentally speaking but we must trust god that through the ministry of the word and the ministry of superior mentorship we must evolve to give ourselves a new orientation about life there are preachers that god can never give global visibility to the truth is that there will be an embarrassment to the kingdom not because of wrong things like immorality and the rest they do not sustain the requisite level of orientation to present jesus globally is someone learning this morning so in addition to our knowledge for god 
our consecration and press into spiritual things for god's sake we have to trust god for grace to give us the ability to sustain superior orientation a transformed mind how do you know you are transformed when it becomes difficult to connect you to any earthly territory i shouldn't just look at you and say you are behaving like a northern something about your orientation is betraying you i'm not talking about refusing your people or denying them don't don't misunderstand me are we together i should see you and not even know are you Igbo? are you hausa are you yoruba because of the excellency of your transformation you have defeated the limitation that comes with your territory There are many people who still carry the badge of the limitation of their territories because of unbending loyalty to values that are antichrist. We hold on to it like a like um, an inheritance, something we are unwilling to let go. No. You must be transformed. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Man of God, you must be transformed. As a preacher, when you are dealing with your local assembly you deal with them with the heart of a shepherd but when god gives you an opportunity to talk to a global audience your examples your context your intelligence your approach must be such that someone from finland someone from america someone from uk someone from not everybody is suffering what you are suffering so they will not even understand what you are saying you can't generalize your pain and speak a language that only you can understand this is where the intelligence of Jesus comes. Do you know Jesus used in his examples, examples that will last through time. He used agriculture because in any generation, no matter that civilization, the terms of agriculture will not fade out. You would notice that in his approach, he was very long term in his thinking. He satisfied the context of his generation, but then he also looked through time so if you see a seed on the ground it's still relevant today there were a few expressions that have brought confusion to the body of christ today for instance what the bible says the eye of the needle because it was used contextually he was not talking about a needle that you used to sew clothes but because you are reading it now with the mindset of another generation there are many scriptures that don't make sense so if you want to present jesus in a way that a generation receives him you must be able to give yourself orientation and let me tell you something your transformation will also demand changing your approach and your outlook to life transformation is a product of many things education is also valuable as god grants grace because for many of us our limitation in orientation is stopping us from presenting jesus to a global audience be transformed you want to become a voice you must be transformed by the privilege of god's grace there's no region in this nation i have not gone to and god has granted us the privilege to take the gospel and the truth of this kingdom across many regions even outside of this nation and i can tell you transformation demands flexibility to other people's culture without compromise are we together yes because i've been to places where they have treated me in certain funny ways that ordinarily i would not be open to embrace but that is the that is their cultural definition of honor are we together i have been to places where people who are far older than me old enough to be my grandfather come and line up and waiting for me to arrive ordinarily i would not do that i wouldn't want to burden why do you burden an old man for instance or old men for hours to come and receive me but that is the symbol of honor according to that system are we together i came here yesterday and and bishops lovely daughters they were there to receive me and gave me that um you know and i wore and, and she recited something so beautifully i i wanted her to finish let me just hug and say what kind of a brilliant girl is this now i can't push them and say i came to preach the gospel get out of the way please give me the mic there are times that you have to be temperate in all things 
provided it does not lead to the compromise of your faith and the compromise of the message you must have flexibility believing that the whole world will be like you think like you and act only based on the limited scope of your culture will limit the advancement of the gospel are we together There are certain disciplines that I enforce as a person and there are certain disciplines that I enforce within the context of the work God has given me. But I've had the privilege of traveling to regions where I see people, their physical outlook, their approach may not be an outlook that I ordinarily will endorse. But you will have to subscribe to that flexibility as touching the culture you are dealing with. Are we together? I will not wholeheartedly endorse that I have gone for instance for for clarification I've gone to places where I see people both men and women they wear earrings they do a lot of things ordinarily you will not come and wear an earring and sit close to me what are you doing I know enough whether you're a male or female and I will tell you right there and then who you are in case you don't know are we together but then you have gone to regions I can't say I will not preach simply because I'm spotting some guy wearing a short trouser as if he's going to this and you know there are things personally they may compromise on your personal values but then you must sustain the flexibility to still have that sense of accommodation no wonder Jesus stood at the well with a woman do you know that was a risk even to his ministry what if he was caught and put on Facebook what are you doing this known woman now please don't get me wrong i'm not endorsing licentiousness please don't let's not confuse what we're dealing with here but we're saying there is a level of rigidity that has to be taken out otherwise end time ministry will not be effective do you know what it means to be a sheep among wolves every time a wolf sees a sheep they don't discuss it will eat it that means there has to be a formation that sheep has to be able to present itself in a way for its own safety first before impact hallelujah there are many believers for instance who have gone to certain places of work they have had the honor to sit in certain offices and in a bid to honor their christian creed they did not employ diplomacy and they took certain actions politically that they are still paying for it today all in the name of jesus because they did not sustain the orientation to know that dealing with systems you need to requ it requires flexibility if you if i give you a job and i find you praying in tongues from 10 to 11 and there you are not there to do the sales or whatever it is i will send you away from my company even though i'm a preacher now i love you i do not hate your spiritual life but you must be able to create a system is someone learning please am i wasting your time this is very important there are some battles that we cannot fight and win we have to create a system of flexibility and adjustment and this is why i honor your bishop sincerely for his flexibility there are certain things that cannot happen until we are flexible even in and with our approach there are people for instance every time they hear that name apostle they just think that our prophet they just think these are just a bandwagon of unserious people who are not you know these people are not serious maybe some church riffraff jumping from place to place and already maybe in time past or maybe because of a personal experience you've had that but you cannot just generalize and say everybody who prophesies is fake everybody who does miracles is fake everybody who preaches like me now is fake me that my grandfather was a founder of ministry somebody who later got born again from an idol worshiper who was closer to ministry <laughs> just an example are we together you know most times when i begin to walk you know the minister by the spirit and as i'm ministering to people sometimes i see the shock on people's faces i have to pause and say hey let me tell you i am not do not make a mistake of allowing the devil tempt you to think i went to collect power from somewhere don't insult the price that we are paid with god thinking everybody 
when to go and collect it's not everybody devil gives power to you can go and beg him he will still refuse say there are it's not everybody we must embrace transformation in the name of jesus christ i've gone to places for instance respectfully speaking preaching in churches where there's high level energy they can jump from pillar to post the youth can come and do their dance and i can sit there impatiently but gratefully just waiting for my turn to preach i can't stand up and say listen i was not brought up this way sing that hymn and get straight to the point and let me preach there is a level of flexibility that will not it does not necessarily equal to compromise can i tell you some kinds of rigidity that we are bringing is the reason why certain youths are running away right now from church now and youths let me balance it too if you don't behave yourself well too we need to balance it so that it does not become an endorsement for licentiousness because there are many youths who are not looking for jesus they are just looking for liberty we are talking about youths who are looking for jesus there are many people who want all the laws everything that holds the tenants of responsibility and morality they want it removed so that if they can come to church naked they can come and go back and say it's my life no we are talking about youths who genuinely need jesus is that a good balance because when when you hear a preacher like this usually they are lost now relates to that statement and they say this is what we have been trying to say no 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 we are speaking within the context of serious and disciplined people who are really ready to seek the things of the kingdom let me hurry up so we pray my time is almost up so number one you must know god number two you must be transformed let me advise you please look up i want you to buy books not just books that talk about um, scriptures and the rest alone but you need to buy books that help to stimulate your creativity and help to understand how your mind works honestly speaking if we do not sustain certain levels of transformation we will not go far it will be difficult for god to use us you know in the parable um in second kings now i believe chapter four just me you may just write it for reference the bible talks about a woman one of the wives of the sons of the prophet is that true she was in debt i hope i'm right on the yeah so the bible says that when she went to the prophet and said they're about to take my children he asked her a question he said what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a little cruise of oil the point i'm trying to share is that oil had the power to multiply for her to pay her debt and leave off the rest but the container that was carrying the oil was what made the oil look small and the prophet said i know what your problem is you have a great anointing but your mindset is small go and expand your mindset the problem is not the oil the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel watch this many of our fathers who did not have the privilege to either go to school or have some kind of superior orientation you know that most of those people were anointed many of them have gone to be with the lord but because their mindsets were not superior they did not maximize the potential of that anointing now that same anointing can come upon someone else who has a larger accommodation and orientation and you now see other potentials in that anointing it was always there but the mindset limited it only god knows the potentials that the graces we carry can produce as far as the advancement of the kingdom is concerned but our limitations our limitations our mindsets number three what does it take to become a voice especially in today's world am i wasting your time the third requirement is you must be extremely valuable extremely valuable please write it down very simple charge but it's very important you must be extremely valuable you must be extremely 
valuable Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 Proverbs 18 16 it says a man's gift replace the word gift with the word value a man's value make it room for him is that in your Bible and bring it him before great men can I tell you you know you are valuable to the degree to which men are placing a demand on you we have to be very sincere here not just for preachers but for everyone when you are not valuable they will perceive you and give you an impression that you are a non-entity nobody will pursue you for offering nothing we have to be very sincere there are many people who magically believe that they will gain loyalty without being valuable a generation will not listen to you until you truly have something to say or something to offer be it a preacher be it a businessman from a secular standpoint you travel to places like Europe and Asia and you will marvel and wonder at what those young children are doing. Teenagers bringing value, solutions that are needed and useful even within the context of today's world. It's impossible to ignore them even if you don't believe them. When you read Mark chapter 1, let's read from verse 35. Mark chapter 1 from verse 35. This is Jesus now. He finished all his crusades and everything he had to do. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. 36. And Simon and they that were with him did what? Followed after him. There will always be followership for he or she who is valuable. Verse 37 let's read together please if you can see it projected ready one to read and when they had found him they said unto him all men how many men man of god this can be true in your life if you are valuable politician this can be true in your life businessman this can be true in your life all men seek for thee i made a covenant with god and with my destiny that as far as God's demand upon my life is concerned I will walk myself by the privilege of God's grace to be extremely valuable that I will never stand on any man's pulpit and talk nonsense and they just wave him and say please let this be the last time this man comes here he came and wasted our time people will not just come to listen to you until you have what to say for where the carcasses are did your Bible not say that there the eagles will gather man of god be valuable intellectually valuable spiritually valuable carry content carry grace carry intelligence deliver with excellence and no bias no prejudice whether tribal whether religious will successfully be able to trap you down covenant with yourself that you will not stand before anyone on this earth and feel intimidated you can feel challenged but that your value will brand your impact so much when you stand you will only honor people for their uniqueness but not to the detriment of your own value there are many preachers who are angry jealous today because they have refused to work on themselves please look up nigeria produces crude oil but it does not do us any good until we take it out refine it and bring it the one you queue for is not the one they bring out that dark paste the one you queue for is the one that is refined men will not come to an unrefined you men will not come to a potential you they come to a you who has done his assignment man of god don't go around saying god called me the fact that you have to say it is proof that something is not speaking results speak when they are refined for someone here is a charge go and sit down my dear people worship ministers and the rest don't go around singing songs that only you understand stay with god and let him build you that if you stand and sing right from here jalingo someone will be singing your song in australia because the content the power the grace let me tell you the truth when you want to be valuable 
you have to be honest with yourself and stop over pampering yourself if you want to be valuable be careful so that you don't clap for yourself too early I listen to almost all my messages for personal edification and then for improvement Is someone learning man of God you stand on stage you quote 10 scriptures only one was right the members are watching they may respect you but they are watching so the next time you say God said they translate your 1 over 9 1 over 10 error and say I'm not sure you really had well because scriptures that you can see you didn't get it how about the realm of the spirit that you can I, I, why should I be sure your prophetic word is correct are we together they ask you to go and prepare for a seminar do your homework don't stand there and say it does not matter even God knows I'm honest no study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed the Bible declares rightly dividing the word of truth you are a tailor here do not stop until you sow for kings you are a builder here do not stop until you build for kings you may have heard me say time and again how do you know you are valuable when you find yourself in the palace until you have gotten to the palace you are not yet there because until you serve kings you cannot receive the reward of kings is someone learning i speak to you in the name of jesus that as a result of this morning's meeting and the challenge that it has brought to your life kings will begin to place a demand on you i'm saying this because i want you to learn be valuable be very very valuable i may stop here just the third you have to be valuable i am i am i am when i see people who underutilize their potentials spiritually speaking and otherwise i get agitated in my spirit not negatively because i feel there is more that they can do hallelujah madam i know you cook but for as long as you remain small like that and don't improve yourself you will keep getting angry at those who are being called the day you improve yourself both in your packaging and cooking one day you will hear that they are calling you in abuja you will think it's a lie favor is easy when there is competence let me repeat myself favor is easy when there is competence favor is easy man of god the nations can open for you when you are prepared it is often said that every time the student is truly ready the teacher comes so if the teacher has not come it means that the student is not ready walk on yourself walk on yourself people give me a lot of gifts and among the many gifts that they give me are clothes people love to you know they just sew clothes whether suits traditionals or anything and when i try them on for a few of them that i do try sometimes i laugh at myself and i said what was in the mind of the person who sewed this thing did he really intend it for me or did he just do it for many people and they just distributed because sometimes i can wear something twice my size and i'm saying you mean this guy sat down and actually was it for me did he get my measurement i'm not trying to be sarcastic i'm just saying come on no if if you want if you want to to attract the attention of kings you must be thorough you must be excellent man of god thorough stand to preach on sunday or any other day if you are given the privilege don't waste the altar don't waste god's people's time deliver with precision with exactitude with intelligence and with the anointing and even your superiors will mark you you see the thing about competence is it does not have to be done twice to be seen competence is so powerful that at your first delivery of it they know you know excellent people immediately because excellence is a language as a preacher as a politician as a career person as an elder statesman are we together we're going to pray
One of my tailors many years ago, he listened to one of my messages where I was challenging people to be competent and to be excellent. And he took one year and worked on himself. At, as at that time, he had not, he, he was not sewing anything for me. And he made up his mind. And then I was in Zaria. He traveled down to Zaria and brought the clothes. I just felt a stirring in my heart to get up in the night and to try them on. You can imagine. And I got up and I tried them. The finishing was excellent when I looked at it. He just missed a bit on the size. But the finishing was excellent. I had to tell the protocol. I said, go and look for the gentleman who did this and let him come. And that was it. The rest is history. Most of your prayers is not answered because God wants to help you. If your destiny helpers meet you in that raw state, it may close a door that will take mercy to open. So God delayed your breakthrough so you will walk on yourself fast. Not every delay is demonic. There are some delays that are a sign of God's mercy so that you prepare in a hurry. Are we together? They gave you a contract to cook for a wedding and only the people you cooked with were able to eat the food. Okay, take it as a challenge and go back and say, no, I have to work on myself. Don't say my brother married or did something and I was here. And he, this is the sentiments that we bring around. People collect contracts, they don't do it or they don't do it well. And they whip up emotions, biases of tribe, biases of religion and other things. Remember what I told you, favor is easy when there is competence. If I know you are a Christian architect, for instance, and you are exceptional, it becomes easy to favor you because now you have given me an added basis to even honor you. And I will honor you without feeling ashamed. I can prove that my bias for you was correct or justified. Many incompetent people want favor and yet it does not work for them. Is God challenging someone this morning? make up your mind that you will be exceptional workers in this church let me challenge you in this morning session make up your mind to give yourself the best continue to improve yourself don't recycle your level of excellence grow grow there are still other heights are we together whether you are in the media you are in the ushering you are whatever thank god for the level that you are in but you should always observe do an honest critique on yourself what can i do to improve myself within um, within the jurisdiction of that which is allowed how can i be a better usher how can i be a better protocol okay i was given the assignment of conducting a service i didn't do it so well i go back to god lord i take responsibility i can grow you improve yourself sooner or later you'll find out that you are not on the floor again champions are people who are determined they are people who are given to continuous improvement you go right now to my room and check my laptop there is a message i'm listening to and there are things i'm doing concerning myself once i'm done with my session i go back and i will continue working on myself before the evening that i have come for a program is not an excuse it is not luck it is not just there is a place for diligence are we together we have to pray. Yeshua Hamashia. Yeshua Hamashia. Komina na kane, 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 Yeshua, Yeshua. 
Two more times with faith in your heart. For the last time now, with faith in your heart. Oh, me na na Hallelujah. Can we take two prayer points? Will that be fine? Prayer point number one. Lord, in my lifetime, I must become a voice for your majesty. Lift your voice and pray. In my lifetime. Go ahead and pray. Someone is declaring. Make it a commitment and turn it into a prayer. In my lifetime, I must become a voice. In the area you have called me to function, in career i must become a voice an influence in ministry not for the gratification of the flesh but for your majesty someone pray in the name of jesus i make a decision and i make a covenant with my destiny I must become a voice politically I must become a voice in ministry I must become a voice financially I must become a voice as far as kingdom exploits is concerned no excuses in the name of Jesus I obtain grace In Jesus name last prayer point the Bible says no man intending to build a house and a tower will not first sit down and count the cost whether he has what it takes to finish it hallelujah I have shared with you a few of the demands it is not enough to just claim things you must be willing to responsibly work in partnership with the Word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to subscribe to the demands demand number one is the demand of knowing God having an experience with God like we said yesterday demand number two is the demand of transformation exploring another horizon higher than your cultural context higher than the context of status quo and then number three to be valuable extremely valuable not gifted being gifted does not necessarily translate to being valuable. You can be gifted potentially. Value talks of the refined version of you. Hallelujah. Some of you may need to embrace this Bible and begin to settle down. Create a system and a routine for your spiritual growth. Some of you may need to go to a bookstore around or to order online if you can or get together materials from minds brilliant minds who have paid their price to explore you're a man of god here may i challenge you that it takes more than good preaching to be able to run a ministry successfully learn leadership learn administration learn finances learn diplomacy as a man of god you will be interacting with people from the political space the judicial space you must understand their language and sustain the intelligence to be able to relate with people you must understand psychology 
people will not come and trust you with their lives and submit to your leadership when they see you as a confused individual even though well-meaning it's time to shake off this mediocrity and take away excuses and make up our minds that i will be exceptional by the grace and the spirit of god is someone ready to pray father all that it takes for me to be a voice to my generation i obtain grace to walk in it go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the discipline to pray the discipline to fast the discipline to study scripture until i build my spiritual capacity i obtain grace from god in the name of jesus someone is praying lord the requisite level of exposure that i need to lift me beyond the horizon of culture to lift me beyond the horizon of my local environment to lift me beyond the horizon of status quo i obtain grace i obtain grace i obtain grace finally pray for the grace to refine your value lord i'm tired of being jealous i'm tired of fighting people with bitter envy i'm tired of a life of competition i obtain grace i obtain grace to work on myself to work on my gift to work on my value until i'm able to serve kings with honor in the name of jesus christ may i encourage you therefore to please go and listen to these teachings again and then to charge you like i did yesterday night with the permission of bishop that tonight we trust god to be able to i'll teach some more and then we'll have the opportunity to speak over our lives pray for the sick and then pray particularly over our request i believe in the god that answers prayers and i know that god will do us wonders tonight may the lord bless you and i declare that all the sessions that are coming up will be profitable sessions for us all in the name of jesus we will not be victims of these truths we have heard but they will add and contribute to our excelling in the name of jesus christ amen give jesus a big big hand clap Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko Kopre Kateka Nakata The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline